Hey, everybody, I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Natalie Wood, What Remains Behind, a brand new documentary, Laurent Bouzereau, Natasha Gregson Wagner. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, nice to meet you. Nice to see you. It's good to be doing this. I know it's a little weird with the whole virtual world, but I'm really happy we're talking right now. And I'm really happy that people get to learn about Natalie Wood because I feel like a whole new generation will get to learn about her story. So, Natasha, why don't we start with you? I mean, this is your mom. This is a really personal story for you. What was it like going through old footage and, you know, doing this whole story? Um, it was incredibly cathartic, I would say, to to discover <laughs> to discover the footage and rediscover photos, go through her journals and and some of her writings. Um, it, it just really corroborated the childhood that I remember, I would say. Laurent, you've told many different stories before, and obviously this is a fascinating world to jump into. What was it like bringing life to some old black and white footage, and what was most intriguing about Natalie Wood to you? Well, you know, the thing that was most intriguing to me was a journey of discovery for myself. You know, as a, as a filmmaker, you always want to have a discovery, a journey, uh, so that, you know, that's part of the fun of making a documentary. And I didn't know, for example, that Natalie Wood was, um, an actress, an actor with so much power that she could choose her own films, um, her own co-stars, her own directors. And so uh, once I knew that and I started watching her films again in preparation for the film, um, I just realized that all of her movies were kind of autobiographical. It told so much about herself, but also about things she cared about. So that was something that really informed me in, in um, structuring the documentary and using her films, not so much in chronological order, uh, but as um, in a way entering her world thematically and see how the film spoke so much about who she was and what she stood for. Yeah, I think the power that she had was one of the most incredible things, especially at that time. And I feel like yeah. old Hollywood is really fascinating to look back on. So for both of you, when you think about old Hollywood, what kind of pops out of you immediately when you think back to that time? Well, I think for me, you know, by virtue of the fact that my parents were sort of a part of that time, a lot of those people, you know, spent a lot of time at, at our house growing up. So I, I think I saw some of these greats in their most relaxed states, you know, and what I remember about them was just their humanity, their, their joy, their, their sense of humor, um, their vitality and lust for living. And I think you see that in their performances on screen as well. Yeah, Laurent, what was it like talking with some of these people like Robert Redford and Mia Farrow? What did you learn in these conversations? Well, I mean, it was pretty amazing talking to them because they provided a perspective on 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 Natalie Wood that I didn't necessarily expect. Like, I didn't know that, you know, she had pretty much given uh, Robert Redford, you know, his uh, big screen uh, start. And I didn't know that um, Natalie Wood and Mia Farrow were pen pals and friends. And, and, and so that really provided a very interesting uh, window into her. But, but you know, you be a little quiet? I'm sorry. I, I, I don't see Natalie Wood necessarily as old Hollywood. And that's one thing that I'd like to add is that, you know, we lost her, a, a, you know, way too soon. But as she was growing herself as an artist. She was embracing new directors like Sidney Pollack and, and Paul Mazursky. People who were just, uh, you know, at the, at, uh, at the beginning of a new revolution in cinema, uh, um, you know, and even her last movie, Brainstorm, that she did with Douglas Trumbull, who was and, and still is arguably one of the great visionaries um, of, of, of movie making. So she was growing with the industry and actually, you know, looking at all of her trajectory, uh, you get a, a, a real lesson in transitional uh, um, times in Hollywood, you know, how it was old Hollywood and became the new Hollywood. And it, it's, uh, it's kind of fantastic to see that because very few actors of her generations were, were able to do it. I think that's one of the coolest parts of her story. And in a lot of different ways, she was ahead of her time. So Natasha, when, yeah. when you think about your mom, like what allowed her to get to that point where she was thinking about directors who were gonna be a part of the next wave? Or like, 
even being vulnerable enough to like, you know, write about her feelings and her marriage and her life, like, where do you think that all came from? Well, that's very much the woman that I remember, the mother that I remember, you know, somebody who had, I mean, she wielded all the power in our household. You know, she made the rules, she set the schedule, everybody had to check in with her. She was the boss lady. And, um, but within that, she was, you know, so strong, but, but vulnerable and, and warm and accessible and, you know, all her, her writings, she was so articulate and she was always asking me, Natushi, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? I want to explain this to you, you know, very much sensitive and checking in on, on my feelings or, you know, calibrating emotions. And she was just so good at that. Um, so none of this is a surprise to me. I mean, that's sort of how I, I remember her, but I'm just incredibly grateful that the world is now gonna know about her in this way, you know, because she was such a force. I mean, she was a true supernova. No question about it. Laurent, for you, what was it like watching Natasha talking to her father or talking to other people who interacted with her mother? What was the coolest part of that for you? Well, you know, we had such a close uh, relationship, Natasha and I, th through the process, and we prepared all the interviews together. Uh, um, and we decided right off the bat that that interview uh, with Robert Wagner was going to be done by Natasha. Uh, 